Okay, so today we are going to paint the Royal Warden from the Indominus box set. Um, it's a pretty simple miniature, uh, a, only a handful of pieces, comes on its own little sprue. Um, I believe it was a cross from the Primaris Captain, um, but only a couple parts, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven parts, easy enough. Um, should be a quick, uh, quick paint job. Uh, we're going to do it in the scheme of the Nihilek dynasty, so we're going to do turquoise shoulder pads, we're going to do um, black weapon furniture, uh, we're going to do some gold accents. Um, so the colors we'll be using primarily, um, we're going to start off with this silver, we're going to hit it with um, some basilicum gray contrast, we're going to uh, tone it down with some uh, technical contrast medium. This will thin it out. Uh, putting the Basilicum Gray straight on the silver like this, it will come out a little dark. Uh, it'll look like lead belcher with null oil, like two coats of null oil over it. Um, really what we want is a very thin gray, uh, very light opacity gray over this. Uh, I did prime on the sprue. I've been doing that with the Necrons. Um, so once I get him cut off, I'll be touching up with some plate mail metal before we do anything. This will lead into these two. From there, uh, the carapace will be Sotek green, highlights of Temple Guard blue, and then extreme highlights of Screaming Skull. Uh, Screaming Skull, just on the very sharpest highlights. The weapon itself, we're going to do uh, Abbott and Black for the weapon furniture. Um, and then we're going to do Gold Coils using Retributor Armor. And we'll be doing, uh, using the new Technical Contrast Paint Tesseract Glow for the orbs inside. Um, those are really nice. Basically, all you got to do is hit it with some White Scar let that dry for a second, and then uh, the Tesseract Glow contrast uh, paint. As you can tell, it's very bright. It separates very quickly, but give it a quick shake, and it is extremely bright. It'll look really good. Um, just for an idea of how things look, I'll pull over my... Um, this is the Overlord that I did. Um, as you can see, it's got that bright green. It's got the turquoise and the silver. Um, I don't anticipate this guy to take too long. Uh, I will probably do a step or two uh, of just painting one or two things on camera, and then I'll probably jump to a very quick uh, uh, time lapse of painting the whole thing. I want to give you guys a chance to see everything as it's done. Um, as far as shades go, uh, we might do a little bit of Agrax Earthshade Gloss on some of the parts, uh, like this gold here, uh, very similar to here. We'll be doing Retributor Armor Gold and we'll be doing Sotek Green on the little dots on the dangly bits. Um, but yeah, let's crack on. We'll start building, uh, and then touching everything up. So here we go. Okay. So we've got the contrast paint down. Um, it's a little tacky still, but it's getting there. Okay. Um, in the meantime, ooh, just laid that down right in some wet paint. There you go, Ken. That's exactly how you paint stuff. It's just the shoulder joint, so it doesn't really matter. Um, better now than later. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so let's move all these little guys off the paint palette so that doesn't happen again. Okay, um, while we're waiting for that to dry, I think what we can do is we can work on the gun furniture, which we're going to do black. Uh, we can work on these little dangly bits, which we're going to do gold. Uh, we can do the shoulder blades in that deep turquoise. 
Um, and then same here, we can do this up here. I think once those pieces get done, we can assemble the model and then start working from there. Uh, I always like to do, you know, with characters and like, um, at least the first couple steps in subassembly, uh, just because if you want it to look good, it's just gonna be a giant pain to try and get up behind him and get these little like glowing bits in the back of the gun. You know, something's hanging in front of the chest and you can't get to the cartouche. Uh, it's it's more of a hassle than it's worth. Um, I very rarely build a full model now and, um, and then paint, uh, especially characters. Like it's fine if you're painting orc boys, uh, if you watched my assembly and painting tutorial on the Necron Warriors, I built them and painted them. Um, not terribly, terribly hard, because uh, they're mostly one color. <clears throat> but, you know, if we come back again to the Overlord, uh, every part of him was painted before I glued anything together. It's just, it's not worth it on a character that's really going to be the centerpiece of your army um, to put them together and then realize that you can't get to half of the spots, which you will see from across the table when he's sitting there and you're looking at him from behind and you see, oh, I couldn't get to the tabard. Or, you know, you someone picks him up to look at him during a game and they're like, oh, you didn't get all his guts or the fiddly bits back here or something. Um, it's just... It's not worth it. Uh, if you want good looking miniatures and, you know, I don't claim to be the best painter around, uh, but I like my guys to look nice. You know, it's it's nice to, to feel the model and be proud of it um, with the way it looks. Uh, and that's really what this tutorial is gonna be about, is helping you get these models up to what I would consider to be a good tabletop standard where you can feel them and be proud of what you did. Um, so let's crack on with the gold. Uh, for this, I like to use... Normally all my paints are in order. I apologize. Uh, Retributor Armor. It's a good base. It flows really well with minimal thinning. Um, and it's just really bright. Like, going back here, this blade is Retributor Armor. It's just... And that's all it is. You know, uh, a little bit of... Um, Runefang steel along the edge to give it that sharpness, uh, but that's just, that's just this. Uh, it's, it's a fantastic gold. I really love it. It's nice and bright. Um, for anyone watching who might be new to painting, you're wondering why my paints uh, jangle like that when I shake them. Uh, I'm a big fan of adding ball bearings. It helps mix it a little bit easier, especially if, like me, you fall in and out of painting uh, fairly often, you know, where you don't pick up your paintbrushes for a month. Um, I'm not going to fast forward this one, uh, just because I think it's worth watching the whole process, um, and it shouldn't take more than a few minutes. So I'm going to use a big brush here just for maximum coverage. Uh, I'll switch to a small brush when I start doing smaller pieces, um, especially... Uh, later on, once we do everything, we start going back and doing the detailing, like on the cartouche and the glyphs, like similar here, uh, doing all of these glyphs with a big brush like this is just not, not helpful. Uh, for anyone watching, wondering what this is, this is literally just a number two brush. It's Teclon, um, uh, so it's, it's nice and cheap, uh, and honestly, I think you get a, especially for basing and and doing just regular detail, you get a really good, um, really good result. See, it goes on so smooth. God, I love, I love this color. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do the back, just nice and, no need to be super accurate here and, and worry about every little detail, because honestly, we're gonna let this dry. We're gonna go over it with some, some shade and add those, recesses um, and this early on in the painting stage you can really be a little bit messy you just want to make sure you get some good coverage uh, do make sure when you when you go across it though you're not leaving globs of paint you always want it to be a nice thin coat um, I don't really have a problem with 
Retributor armor, uh, but if you, let's see, I just did it right there, I spoke too soon. Um, if you use too thick of a paint, you'll gum up all your details. When in doubt, just a little bit of air pressure. Now I say, it doesn't come up the details, and that's exactly what happens. There we go. Okay, cool. So that's done. It's a nice little gold, you know. It's a. Uh, it's not. It's not about being perfect. It's just about making it look good. Cool. Along the sides, make sure you get the sides too. Often neglected. Uh, part, and then you'll notice it when you look at it from across the table, and you'll be like, well, shit, I missed the silver. Okay, so let's do this one right here. Again, just a nice little thin coat. Just to give it that gold look. Um, the wash, I do like the gloss washes by Citadel on metallics. Um, I feel like it just makes them look uh, more metally, you know, and, and Agrax Earthshade can really take your your yellow uh, on the gold and really make it just kind of very deep and vibrant. Um, it enriches the color. It's because it's a brown wash, and if you want to get technical with... Uh, with colors, brown is in the same shade as orange, so it's related to yellows. That's why um, if you follow me on Instagram, sometimes you'll see me uh, talking to, with people about painting yellow. Uh, it's a notoriously difficult color that a lot of people struggle with, especially new painters. Uh, even veterans struggle with yellow a lot of the time. Um, and it's because yellow lacks really deep pigment, it lacks a pigment density. Um, and so it comes off as very stripy. And the way I learned how to paint smooth yellow is with a good undercoat of brown, uh, especially if you can get it with like a yellow hue. Uh, I use, uh, when I'm using Citadel paints, I use Baylor Brown because it has that very uh, yellow hue to it, and that'll help, um, you know. I feel like before I learned that trick, I would go, you know, do what everyone does. You put 15 coats of uh, Averland Sunset over each other, and then curse the, curse the world because it still comes out streaky. Um, but I find, you know, one good coat, sometimes two, depending on, you know, the coverage or, or what you're doing, uh, of Baylor Brown, and you'll be able to put one coat of Reichland Flesh Shade right over it, and it'll be fine. So here I'm just going to do these coils um, gold. I might go in and, and do some, some glowing effects uh, in between the coils later on. I don't know. I, I did it on my Warriors. I'm still kind of juries out on how I feel about it. Uh, I feel like, especially with the Nihilic Dynasty, everything is so cold. You know, they have that, um, you have the green glow, you have the turquoise uh, shoulders and, and detailing, um, and it just, uh, they're very cold colors. And you don't want a lot of cold colors. You want a balance, and gold being a yellow hue um, is warm, and so you can offset warm and cold, uh, and it'll feel more cohesive. I almost actually did, you know, you can see I did the base in here with the astro granite and, and whatnot. I almost did it in a Mars theme similar to my Black Legion. Um, I'm gonna, you know, I'm going to do these little 
Just little pistons and gold. Just a little something. If you're a new painter, uh, I definitely suggest a palette. Um, normally, I would be using a wet palette. Uh, I just, I prefer my wet palette, but it's been so damn hot lately. And just, you know, it's, it's the middle of summer in Detroit. It's been pretty hot. And so you just can't, you can't paint with a wet palette. The thing dries out almost immediately. So it's, uh, it's more frustration than it's worth. Um, how am I going to paint this skull? I think I'm, you know what, actually, I don't know. Use your brain, Ken, use your brain. That's what I'm going to do. When in doubt. When in doubt, a little uh, toothpick helps. I didn't glue it, I just jammed it in the little hole in the back. Um, and that way I can just kind of get the skull. The Nihilic Dynasty, they have these gold skulls. Um, trying to get it. I'm not going to do the back, um, because the back of the skull is silver. It's just like a gold face mask up front. Okay, cool. So that's that. We'll just put that there while that's drying. Uh, take a look at his body. I don't think there's any gold I need to do there. Okay, so. Gold done. Let's move on to black. Um, really not much is black on the model. Um, gonna use Abaddon black. Uh, really just gonna do the gun furniture. It's the only black on the model. Uh, everything else is metallics, turquoise, gold, um, glowing green. Uh, it's, it's, Necrons are one of those armies where I feel like the three color minimum you'd normally see uh, people want is kind of a, it's kind of optional. Um, so anyway, I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm, again, it's just one piece. So I'm not even going to bother doing fast forward or anything. Uh, give it a good shake. Oh, this is a new one. Okay, so you know what? Here we go. Uh, these are just ball bearings. Um, just take one. For real liquidy paints, uh, or paints that separate a lot, like the contrast paints, I usually use two. I'm just going to take it. I'm going to drop it inside. And there's that. Click, 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 click. Um... Okay, all right, here we go. Uh, we'll take our brush. Again, we're just gonna use the number two real quick. Um, probably more paint than we need, but it's fine. Um, I'm actually not gonna use the number two. I'm looking at this gun, I think it's a little too big. So I'm gonna switch down to a number zero brush. Uh, and I am going to thin it a little bit. This right here, uh, it's my own concoction. It's just water and Liquitex matte medium. Um, I find it thins a little bit better than water uh, without diluting your paint so much. Uh, the trick is to use just a very small amount, though. Um, because like anything, if you use too much, it will sort of dilute the paint a little bit. So, yeah, just kind of... Helps it flow a little bit. Okay. So basically, I just want to go over the gun furniture here. Um, yeah. Again, no need to be super careful. Um, we're in early stages. You know, try not to, to paint over the silver parts here. Uh, but, you know, if it... If you end up going over a little bit, not the end of the world, just go clean it up once you're done. Um, you know, that is the, the golden rule. I find with a lot of new painters, 
they get really nervous. So I'm going to mess up the, the paint job. Oh, what am I going to do? Um, it's not the end of the world. Just go back, touch it up, and do your best, you know? It's, it's all about just having fun, enjoying the experience of painting. Um, and when you're done, you'll have something that you can be, you can be proud of. It doesn't matter how good it is. I still look at tons and tons of models and I'm like, God, so much better than anything I could paint. And sometimes it's true and sometimes it's me just being critical of myself. Um, you will always be your, your strongest critic. Get real quiet while I try to get into these little tiny little tiny spots. Let's pivot this up. Um, if your hand shakes, um, you know, everyone's hand shakes sometimes. So it's good. If you notice, I'm touching my, my pinky to this hand, and that way at least my hands will shake together. Um, you know, a lot of people struggle with that too. Oh, my hands shake. I can't possibly paint. But some of my friends who are the best painters I know, their hands shake like crazy. It's just a matter of if you hold your hands together like this, they won't shake so much. Or they'll shake, but they'll, they'll shake together. So when your hand moves this way, the piece comes with it. So, um, black is one of those colors we might need to do two coats. It's fine, just take your time. Two thin coats uh, is better than one thick coat. You know, it's easier to put a little more paint on. I uh, don't want to have to get to the point where you have to take paint off. Um, it's a giant pain in the butt. So let's do this. Get in here. Do, 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 do. Get this top of the gun here. Gun casing. All this furniture is going to be black. Um, I don't normally do this for the Necrons, but maybe I'll go in and we can edge highlight some of this. You know, um, black is a little tricky to edge highlight, but you know, it's a character. It's, this this is the model. If you're going to go above and beyond, you're going to go the extra mile. You know, do it here. You know, your royal wardens, your your overlords, your your cryptex, your uh, scorpec lords. Do that. Um, if you're not painting Necrons and you're painting the other part of the Indominus box, you know, your chaplain and your your uh, lieutenant and the captain. Take a little extra time. Give them a little extra detail. You know, you don't need to paint every every model to some insane standard. Um, but if you're going to go a little extra on a model, why not make it the, the characters that are going to be the focus of the army? You know, just it'll help them stand out. They're going to be out by themselves anyway. Just a little bit right here. Get in here, get up in here. Yeah, and you can see this isn't a crazy small brush. Um, could be going in with a layer or uh, you know, 10 over zero. Um, I typically, for most decent things, a zero, a zero will get you there. I don't need to go, go absolutely wild. If ever you you're looking at it and you you start to think, oh God, what 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 color does this piece need to be? Just kind of look at the shape of the model, look at where the piece goes, what is it, what does it connect to, um, and let that inform you. You know, sometimes if you're painting these in pieces, it's easy to get lost. Got basically all the black down now. Let's just 
Just do a real rapid thin coat just to darken everything up. Make it actually black, black. Um, I think on my Warriors, I left it a little translucent just to let the metal shine through, but I think this guy won an actual, actual more. Deeper, rich black. Let's see. Okay, let's get in here again. One more second. Boop, 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 boop. Right here. Okay. All right, there we go. Done. And that is all of the black on the model. <laughs> um, so for the next part, I am going to do a time lapse, um, just because this part's a little bit more of a pain. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, I'm going to do all the turquoise. Uh, so that's going to be um, these little dots in here. I'm going to do them turquoise, the shoulders, turquoise, uh, right down the middle of the skull. It's going to be turquoise. And then we're going to do the cartouche and the collar, um, as well as these two little thingamajiggers. So I'm going to do that. We're going to cut. We're going to do a time lapse real quick, and then we'll, we'll rejoin. Okay, so we skipped ahead of a few steps there. Um, as you can see, we did the head. Uh, we got the we had the nice turquoise right down the middle, um, and I did the glowing effect on the eyes uh, with the chest piece. Um, did a nice little glowing effect in between the ribs. Uh, we did the cartouche. So for the cartouche, basically what I did is I just do the whole thing so tech green, and then I get a little bit of gold, just just ever so little tiny amount of gold on the side of a brush, and I just brush it against the raised parts of the cartouche and the collar, and it just picks out all those raised areas, and then you end up with this nice contrast of the gold against the turquoise. Um, again, I did the I did the turquoise so tech green right on all the dots uh, after I did the whole thing gold. Uh, and then I just hit it with some Agrax Earthshade wash that helps sort of darken everything up. It, it really accentuates the dark lines between the panels. Um, and I did the, the glow effect here. I also did the blade gold, which I forgot to do when I was doing the gold before. Um, but doing that, uh, really you just take the white scar, you give it a good coat of white, and then once it's dry, you go over with just one thick pass of the Tesseract, just pulling it from one end to the other with your brush. Just start and just kind of pull it across the whole thing. And it'll it'll settle in the recesses. It'll dye the top parts um, that light yellowy green, and it'll settle into the recesses. And it creates a really nice gradient glow effect. Um, I would have done this previously uh, using traditional paints with a series of moving from Warpstone Glow up to a Moot Green, up to um, sometimes a white. Uh, and that's, it's it's doable, it's just, it's not going to take the five seconds that it takes here. So, um, honestly, next few steps are really just going to be painting some cables, uh, getting the last little details out of the way, uh, and then we're just going to assemble. So I'm going to cut here. I'm going to do the cables. Um, some of the cables will be done with uh, Caliban green, and then we're going to do just a Warpstone Glow uh, highlight on them just to, to give them some depth. Uh, and then we're going to get them all assembled. Once it's assembled, we'll start picking out details. We'll uh, go through and do some highlights. 
and then we'll get him based and we'll we'll do all the basing painting and then honestly that'll be it this guy will be done uh it's a quick you know maybe hour and a half paint job to do the whole thing start to finish might have been a little bit faster if I wasn't stopping and starting my camera so um just bear with me I'll get this painted we'll get them assembled and then we'll move on to the next steps So, um, that fiasco all done. We have him assembled. I don't know if you caught that. Uh, the one issue with priming on the sprue is sometimes it makes, uh, with these push fit models, it makes the pegs just a little too thick to actually fit together. So you gotta scrape it. You get stuck sometimes. You gotta try and pull it apart without breaking it. Your, the oils in your skin will, uh, pull away some of the, uh, the paint um which can look okay for uh weathering but it's not what i wanted on this model so i had to go back and touch things up again i uh, got them together not quite fitting perfectly but uh pretty damn close so uh happy enough with it uh gonna move from here we're gonna um start doing the base uh so we're gonna lay down some astro granite <laughs> Um, and so whenever you work with this stuff, you want to use a texture tool. I tried to get around not buying one of these Citadel tools for forever. Um, generally not a big fan of the Citadel, uh, you know, tools. I mean, the clippers and the mold line remover, or there, it's all things that you can do with something else. Like, obviously I have handy dandy clippers and, and pliers, uh, with the red handles, I, you know, for mold line removing, I just use the back of a hobby knife, just kind of use the blade and scrape backwards. Um, there's not really something that replaces this. Uh, and it's probably because the technical paints are kind of a citadel thing. Um, but they're pretty easy to use. Uh, so essentially you just, I always shake it. You don't really need to shake it, but it gets it up at the top. Use the fat end of the scooper shovel and just scoop a good amount on to your shovel. Then go somewhere where there's no detail. You know, there's not his feet or anything like that. Just kind of mudge it around a little bit. Um, you know, cover as much of it as you can in the big wide open spots. Uh, get back here too, you know, it's kind of, just gonna get all up in there, get a little more on, on here. Um, it's okay to be a little messy with it. Uh, but you just don't want to get too close to any of the detail. Um, once you're going to start getting close to that, flip it around and use the, uh, the smaller side and you can just sort of push it up against the, the detail here and, you know, push it under this rock. around the rock I'm less worried about than say his foot you know you don't want to get texture all over the model's foot um, okay let's, let's get a little more on there just kind of play around with and just kind of the, the small end gives you a bit more control so you can kind of Push everything around a little bit. Haven't done it with anything in the Indominus box, but usually <laughs> right up in the middle of the bases, there's a little divot where, uh, where it gets injection molded. I usually just cut a piece of card and cover that up, but 
with uh, with the texture paints like Astro Granite, um, Martian Iron Earth, stuff like that, where it's it's a bit thicker. You don't need to worry about it so much. But if I was using, say, uh, a Grelin Earth or um, uh, Martian Iron Crust, that you know the the the, um, the crackle paints. That's what they're called, crackle paints. Then I would want to cover that. You just want to be careful, you know, you don't want to get any, any texture paint up on your nicely painted model. Um, just a little bit right here by his foot. All right. With that done, um, you know, let it sit for usually about an hour or two. Uh, and then what we do, what we'll do is <laughs> once it's done, we'll go in, we'll paint the skull, we'll paint the rock, uh, we'll wash both with Agrax Earthshade. We're going to do, and we're going to do both those pieces in, uh, we're going to do the, actually, we're going to do the, uh, stone in Pallid Witch Flesh, and we'll do the skull with Rakarth Flesh. Oh. Um, and then we'll go and we will put Agrax Earthshade on both of them. And then we're going to dry brush the entire base with Tyrant Skull. Um, so we'll cut to that, get it done, and then we'll come back and we'll look at him, uh, once he's all finished. And here he is, finished. Honestly, very quick build. Um, you know, ready for the battlefield, uh, and, you know, getting in, very happy with some of these details. Look, that bright glowing green, the good gold there, um, the turquoise, yeah, that's how you, that's how you do it. You can knock out a character like this and in an evening, all it takes is, you know, really paying attention to what you want to do. Uh, going in with a plan, super important, knowing what your color scheme is and where you want to uh, go. And then, of course, you know, not being afraid to to switch something up when you see pieces go together and decide, you know, I'm going to do this actually in this color. Like um, getting in here into the ribs with that glow was something that I just sort of decided on the fly. I had done it on the Overlord. I kind of liked how it looked. Uh, I think all my characters will get that from now on. Um, doing this green glow inside here, but not as bright as in the barrels. Again, something I just sort of decided on the fly. Uh, really being comfortable, knowing knowing kind of what you what you want, and then adapting to whatever you need after that is uh, that's how you that's how you get it done. So I hope you enjoyed this Royal Guardian. Um, our Royal Warden <laughs> uh, painting tutorial and uh, stick around and I'll see you next time.